Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on first order linear or homogeneous recurrence relations. In the previous video, we are already discussed about what is recurrence relation, how we are finding out the recursive sequence from the given recurrence relation and how to find out the recurrence uh, relation from the given recurrence sequence that can be discussed in the previous video. Okay. Now in this video, how we are solving the first order recurrence relation that is linear or a homogeneous. Okay. Generally, there are two types of recurrence relations. One is a homogeneous recurrence relations and the second one is non-homogeneous recurrence relations. Okay. In homogeneous, again, there are three types. First order homogeneous recurrence relation, second order homogeneous recurrence relation, third order homogeneous recurrence relations and a higher order homogeneous recurrence relation. In the same way, in the non-homogeneous recurrence relations, again it have three types. One is a first order non-homogeneous recurrence relation second order non-homogeneous recurrence relation and third order non-homogeneous recurrence relation and higher order non-homogeneous recurrence relations. Okay, now, now we have to discuss about first order linear or a homogeneous recurrence relations. So linear homogeneous recurrence relations can also be called as linear recurrence relations. Okay, now the first order linear recurrence relation with the constant coefficient can be denoted by using equation 1. So that is a sub x n is equal to c into a sub x n minus 1 plus f of n. Here where c is a constant and f of n is a known function. Okay. So, this is a first order linear recurrence relation. How can you say that this is a first order linear recurrence relation? So, in that recurrence relation, this is nth term. Nth term can be defined in terms of immediate predecessor that is the n minus 1th term. Okay. So, for nth term, immediate previous term is n minus 1 term. nth term can be defined in terms of n minus 1th term. This n minus 1th term can be multiplied with some constant plus f of n. Here, f of n is a known function and c is a constant. So, this type of relation is called as linear recurrence relation of first order with the constant coefficient. Okay. Next, in this recurrence relation of equation 1, here f of n value is equal to 0, then it can be called as a homogeneous recurrence relation. If f of n value is not equal to 0, then it is called as a non-homogeneous recurrence relation. Okay. So, previously I am already told that recurrence relations are two types. One is a homogeneous and second one is a non-homogeneous. How can you say that this recurrence relation is a homogeneous? If f of n value is equal to 0, then it can be called as a homogeneous recurrence relation. Otherwise, it can be called as a non-homogeneous recurrence relation. Now, how can you solve this uh, first order homogeneous recurrence relation? Okay, so by using substitution method. Okay, so this is equation 1. 
equation 1 can be solved by substituting n by n plus 1 in equation 1. So, this is the equation 1. In that equation, we are substituting n plus 1 in the place of n. So, here a suffix n, it can be replaced by a suffix n plus 1. Because in the place of n, we are substituting n plus 1. So, a suffix n plus 1 is equal to c into a suffix n plus 1 minus 1. So, n plus 1 minus 1 plus f of n plus 1. Okay, here plus 1 minus 1 cancel. So, that is a c into a suffix n plus f of n plus 1. Here, n greater than or equal to 1 is there. So, in that place, so we are substituting n plus 1 greater than or equal to 1. So, 1 can be taken this side. So, now n plus 1 minus 1 greater than or equal to 0 plus 1 minus 1 cancel. Then, what is the remaining? So, that is n greater than or equal to 0. So, c into a sub x n plus f of n plus 1. Now, this is equation 2. Okay. Now, substituting n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, up to etc. in equation 2. Okay. Put n is equal to 0. Substituting n value is equal to 0 in equation 2. So, here a sub x n plus 1. Here also a sub x n plus 1. So, substituting n value is equal to 0. So, a sub x 0 plus 1 is equal to c into a naught plus f of 0 plus 1. Okay. So, substituting n value is equal to 0 in equation 2. Then, we are getting this value. a1 is equal to c into a naught plus f of 1. Okay. Now, put n is equal to 1 in equation 2. So, after substituting n value 1, it becomes a2 is equal to c into c into a1 plus f of 1 plus 1 that is f of 2. Okay. So, here a1 value is already there here. So, this a1 value is substituted in this place. So, that is equal to c into what is a1 value? c into a naught plus f of 1 then plus f of 2. So, then here c into c, c square into a naught plus c, c into f of 1 plus f of 2. Okay. Now, substituting n is equal to 2 in equation 2. So, a suffix 2 plus 1 that is equal to a suffix 3 is equal to c into a2 plus f3. Here, a2 value is already calculated in the previous step. That can be substituted in the place of a2. So, that is equal to c into a2 value is this one. c square into a naught plus c into f of 1 plus f of 2. Already it is f of 3 is there. So, multiplying c with the content within the square bracket. So, c into c square c cube into a naught plus c into c c square into f of 1 plus c into f of 2 plus f of 3. Okay. So, in this way, we are substituting n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3. Okay. So, in this way, we have to substituting. Finally, we are getting as nth term a sub x n is equal to c, c power n into a naught plus c power n minus 1 into f of 1 plus c power n minus 2 into f of 2 plus etc. c into f of n minus 1 plus f of n. How we are writing this one? Suppose, how we are writing this one? Suppose we are considering a3 value, a suffix 3 value. Okay, a suffix 3 is equal to c cube into a naught. Here n value is 3, here also n value 3. 
So a sub x n is equal to here n value is same, here n value is same. So that a sub x n is equal to c power n into a naught plus here n value 3, here n value 2, that means n minus 1. So c power n minus 1 into f of 1 plus here n value 3, here n value 1. So that is n minus 2, c power n minus 2 into f of 2, etc. plus c into f of n minus 1 plus f of n. Okay. So after substituting n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, finally we are getting nth term by considering all. Okay. This is the nth term. A sub x n is equal to c power n into a naught plus c power n minus 1 into f of 1 plus c power n minus 2 into f of 2 etc. plus c into f of n minus 1. Here c into f of, here 3 is there, here 2 is there. c into f of n minus 1. Here n value 3 is there. So that directly we are writing f of n. Okay. So after this step, a sub x n is equal to c power n into a naught. This term is the same. Plus this all these terms can be written as sigma k is equal to 1 to n minus 1. So here 1th term to n minus 1th term. So sigma k is equal to 1 to n minus 1. We are Summing all the terms from the first term 1 to n minus 1 term. So it can be written as sigma k is equal to 1 to n minus 1 c power n minus k into f of k for n greater than or equal to 1. So this is the equation 3. So this is the general solution of the recurrence relation 2 which is equivalent to recurrence relation 1. Okay. So, equation 1 and equation 2 are first order linear recurrence relation. So, for that two equations, what is the general solution? This is the general solution of equation 1 or a equation 2. Okay. Next, in this equation, so this is this term is f of nth term f of n okay so this is a known function okay so this f of n term is equal to 0 so then this recurrence relation becomes the homogeneous recurrence relation okay this term becomes 0 then equation 3 becomes equation 4 okay a sub x n is equal to c power n into a naught plus 0. Okay. So, this entire term becomes 0. Then, this relation is called as homogeneous recurrence relation. Previously, we are already discussed that a sub x n is equal to c into a sub x n minus 1 plus f of n. If f of n is equal to 0, then it becomes a linear recurrence relation of first order. That is equation 1. In the same way, this term becomes 0, then the remaining is this one. a sub x n is equal to c power n into a naught for n greater than or equal to 1. So, this is the equation 4. Okay, how we are getting equation 4 from equation 3? So, if f of n is equal to 0, then equation 3 becomes equation 4. So, this is called as the solution for first order homogeneous recurrence relation. Here, a naught value must and should given in the given problem. Okay. So, this is the general solution of first order linear recurrence relation. While you are solving the first order recurrence relation problem, you have to remember this general solution. 
a sub x n is equal to c power n into a naught. Here a naught value is given in the given problem because a naught is called as the initial condition for the first order linear recurrence relation. Okay. So finally, this is the general solution for first order linear recurrence relation. Okay. So in the suppose an example problem is given. So directly we have to use this general solution of the first order linear recurrence relation without solving this entire problem. Okay. Only we have to use this one. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel link. So the bell Srinivasa Rao. In the next video, we have to solve some example problems on first order linear recurrence relations. Thank you.